7.55 right now, and we have breaking news in Blendon Township near Westerville. Firefighters are right now at the scene of a house fire. It woke me up instantly. Um, at that point, I would, I'd gone down the stairs, uh, could see the smoke had begun to start, and at that point, I yelled for my son to make sure that he was, uh, uh, he was up and he understood what was going on. Neighbors tell us that just before 6.30 this morning, they looked out the window and say they could see flames shooting up the side of the house. You can see firefighters here still trying to put out hot spots. There wasn't a lot of time to process what was going on. I mean, it's, it's three minutes from having stuff to, to, to not having anything. We took the emergency squad over to St. Anne's Hospital, and uh, during that process of us being checked out, we were informed that the Red Cross was there waiting for us. They offered uh, to find us a place to stay for that first night, which of course was very critical at that point. To have that there waiting for you was just, uh, it's, it's a nice thing. We were getting ready for church on uh, September 12th, Sunday morning, and everybody was eating breakfast. and. Um, I forgot to eat breakfast, so I said, I'm gonna hurry up and put some Pop-Tarts in the toaster. And we left out the door. And um, I'm always forgetful. So halfway to church, I joked and said, hey, I forgot my Pop-Tarts. And he started teasing me. You know, you always forget everything. As soon as we parked at church, a neighbor called and said, your house is on fire. So we immediately turned around and it was about a 25 minute drive back home. Very nerve wracking. Uh, we barely said anything, but I'm just, you know, praying God let everything be okay. When we got home, there were about five or six fire trucks. Uh, my biggest concern um, immediately was how to recover. And um, I think as, as a husband and a father, you know, my mind went immediately to how do I make this better? How do I make this right? How do we get beyond this? What do I need to do? Um, who do I need to contact? to kind of help us rebuild and, and, and move on from that point. I was sitting on my neighbor's steps and um, I was crying, I had my head down and my sister was trying to console me and she said the Red Cross is here and when I looked up there were two volunteers walking towards me and they had their arms open and they hugged me like they were family. The lady who was talking to us, she said, I've been in a fire before and you know, you're going to recover, it's going to be okay. You know, and at that moment, it was good to hear. The Red Cross called and checked on us so many times afterwards. And you know, you expect that from your family and your friends, people that you know. I appreciated it so much because I felt like they truly sympathized and um, they could truly understand the struggle that we were having with just dealing with the whole thing and then the transition that comes after that. I cannot thank the Red Cross enough. There's, there's no way I could thank them enough. <laughs>